بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يحمد على مكروه سواه الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المظلومين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا وعلى الصفوة الخيرة من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم تعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزلا من غفور رحيم ومن أحسن قولا ممن دعا إلى الله وعمل صالحا وقال إنني من المسلمين ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ولا تستوي الحسنة ولا السيئة ادفع بالتي هي أحسن فإذا الذي بينك وبينه عداوة كأنه ولي حميم ولا يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا ولا يلقاها إلا الذين صبروا ولا يلقاها إلا ذو حظ عظيم صدق الله العلي العظيم The message of Islam, the message of monotheism, the message of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the love and his fellowship and his family's love and fellowship did not reach us without sacrifice, did not reach us free over many centuries there were hundreds of thousands of people who sacrificed their life beginning with Allah, the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first people who gave their life for this religion for this message to get to us and to other people around the world they gave their life, they gave their blood, they were tortured, they were persecuted, they were killed. Yahya ibn Zakariya yuhda ra'suhu ila baghiyyin min baghaya bani Israel. Imagine a great messenger of God by the name of Yahya. His head was separated from his body and his head was presented as a gift to a prostitute. The king wanted to have a relationship with that prostitute. He said to him, if you want me, you have to give me, to gift me the head of Yahya ibn Zakariya, great messenger of Allah. His father also was killed, Zakariya alayhi salam. Many Anbiya during the time of Bani Israel was tor were tortured 
and were killed and butchered. After that, Musa السلام, was harassed, annoyed. لا تكونوا كالذين آذوا موسى فبرأه الله مما قالوا وكان عند الله وجيه. He was harassed by his community. After that, Isa السلام, came again, was persecuted by his own people. People who speak the same language, people who live in the same city and breathe the same air. They chased him, they persecuted him. They scorned him. They attributed false accusations to his noble and chaste mother, Mary السلام. And after that came Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, stated, he said, ma mithla ma No messenger of God, no prophet of God. Was harassed by his own community, by Quraysh, people who love, people who lived with him in the same city, in the same neighborhood. He brought them guidance he brought them salvation and freedom and dignity but they returned that with harassment with stoning him when he comes to them with this message Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. i came for your dignity for your salvation for your sanity they returned that message with the storms he would go out and come back home every single day, bleeding. This noble man, where Allah describes him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ You are nothing but mercy and compassion. This is how they treated him. They scorned him. They dried him. They mocked him. One day he's a sahir, a sorcerer. Another day he's majnoon insane they attributed all terrible and false accusations to him why because he wanted their happiness and their salvation he wanted to guide them the first people who denied him and rejected him and belittled him was his own people Quraysh, those who surrounded him the first persecutors of the Prophet were not the Chinese or the Japanese or the Africans. People who lived with him in the same neighborhood. People who testified many times that he is a sadiq al amin He is the most honest, the most trust trustworthy. Those were the people who turned against him. And then after the Prophet وسلم, did this misery end? It did not end. While the Prophet was still not buried, he was not still, he was not buried. There was an attack on his house. On the house where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about it in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ لِيُذْهِبَ عَنْكُمْ الرِّجْسَ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ وَيُطَحِّرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا On a house, on a house where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, في بيوت أذن الله أن ترفع ويذكر فيها اسمه يسبح له فيها بالغدو والآصال. When this ayah came, Abu Bakr stood, he pointed to the house of Ali and Fatima, he said, Ya Rasulallah, أهذا البيت منها? Is this house included in this verse where Allah says, Fi buyutin, in dwellings, in homes, an turfa. It is the wish and the will of God to be raised in sanctity, in dignity. His name is always being praised in these homes. Is this included in these homes? The Prophet said, 
نعم هذا من أفاضلها Of course this house is the best among these homes This house was attacked The Prophet was not buried yet He's not buried And his noble daughter Fatima this noble daughter of the Prophet was attacked and she sustained injuries and as a result of these injuries she died only a few days after the departure of her father and then after that, what they did to the children of the Prophet, to Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, how did they treat them? The Quran says, The Muslims came to the Prophet Towards the end of his life, they said to him, Ya Rasulullah, you had a big favor on us. We were dead and you raised us. You gave us hope, you gave us dignity and guidance. We were like subhumans and animals. You made of us true human beings. Now we want to return this favor to you. So if you want money, we will give you money. If you ask for land and a property, we will give you that. If you ask for gold and jewelry, we will do that. Ask for anything, we are ready to serve you. Allah sent Jibreel with this message. Ya Rasulullah, say to them, I don't need any financial compensation from you. The only thing, I want you to do for me is to respect my family after my departure. But see what they did to the family of the Prophet. How they treated them in Medina and in Karbala and in Kufa and in Damascus. But the message continued. The message continued because the Prophet and Allah, all of them, from Adam through Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and their families and their disciples and the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they were designed for the Akhirah, not for this dunya. They were created here in this dunya to sacrifice themselves for the Akhir, to be a lesson for us, to be a shield for us, to protect us from corruption, to show us the right path, to tell us in this life there are two paths, there are two ways, there are two roads. One leads to falsehood and corruption. And the other one leads to the truth and to salvation. And sometimes it's not easy to walk on the path of salvation and truth. You have to pay heavy taxes. You have to pay heavy penalties. And one of these penalties is what happened on Sunday in Egypt. Not far from Cairo. An honorable man by the name of Sheikh Hassan Shahata, who chose to follow the path of Ahlul Bayt, the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Because he discovered the truth after a long period of investigation, he discovered that this is the path, this is the way 
and he preached the message of Ahlul Bayt. He was visiting another village to celebrate the occasion of mid Shaban with a group of the followers of Ahlul Bayt, the Shia Muslims in Egypt. And because of the hate speech of the takfiris who are sustained and supported by the shaitan, who are sustained and supported by the money, the petrodollars, the petrodollars which is dividing the Muslim ummah and the Muslim nation, the petrodollars which is creating fitna in the land, the petrodollars which is, which is the cause of the bloodshed today, not only in Egypt, in Syria and Iraq and Yemen and the Arabian Peninsula and many other places on earth. Dividing the Muslims, sectarianism, petting one group against the other. Rather than inviting Muslims to be united, to be God-fearing, to help each other and respect each other and live in harmony with each other. These monies, the petrodollars, which comes from certain sources and certain governments, is dividing the Muslims. And making the Muslims weak and weak day after day. Today the weakest nation on earth is the Islamic nation. And this is because the Quran tells us, وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَلَا تَنَازَعُوا فَتَفْشَلُوا وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ When you fight, when you bring this sectarianism, when you bring this takfir, when you start calling a group of worshippers, a group of muwahideen, monotheists, you call them non-Muslims, and you say it is okay to kill them and torture them, and you must destroy them, فَتَفْشَلُوا You're going to fail. وَتَذْهَبَ رِيحُكُمْ Your power, your energy, your strength, your dignity is going to go away. You're going to lose it. And this is exactly what has happened. This is exactly what has happened. Now our enemy is rejoicing at our own weakness. When those people were killed in Egypt, when there is a war between Sunni Islam and Shia Islam, when there is sectarianism, who's making the gain? Who's making the profit? The Sunnis are making the profit? The Salafis are being victorious? The enemies of Islam. The enemies of Islam. So this man was worshipping in a private house. And because of the hate speech of some takfiris against the Shia, calling the Shia non-Muslims, they should be out of Egypt, they should be eradicated. Imagine in Egypt, there are people who don't worship God, but they are okay, they are safe. In Egypt, there are people who are fighting God, and some of them, they worship idols, they have the freedom. In Egypt, there is all sorts of religions and faiths. But they have a freedom. Only one group who don't have a freedom. And those are the followers of Ahlul Bayt. And Egypt was made. Egypt is the product of Ahlul Bayt. Cairo is the product of Ahlul Bayt. It was Ahlul Bayt and the followers and the lovers of Ahlul Bayt who built today's Cairo. Now they are unwelcomed in that land. Allahu Akbar. It reminds me, it reminds me of Pharaoh in the same land in Egypt when he referred to Musa. He said, Da'uni aqtulu Musa. Let me kill this man because he is bringing corruption into Egypt. He is bringing facade and mischief into Egypt. Pharaoh, who appointed himself to be the Lord, and who asked people to worship him. A man who killed hundreds of thousands of innocent people. 
he accuses Musa السلام, of being deviant and corrupt and he wants to bring fasad and fitna and commotion into Egypt. This is happening today. This is happening today against the school of Ahlul Bayt and the followers of Ahlul Bayt. Not only in Egypt, in Mecca and Medina, in the Gulf states, in the Arabian Peninsula, in Syria, in Iraq. Today I saw a big flyer. This big poster was put in a mall in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia. It says, I'raf al-Shia, recognize the Shia. Number one, Shia always, they curse the companions of the Prophet. As if we have nothing to do but to curse the companions of the Prophet. Let me ask you here, how many of you, how many of you here, you curse the companions of the Prophet every day? How many? Or once a month, or once a year, or once in your lifetime? How many? Is this what we do? The Shia, we, after the Salat, we say 34 times Allahu Akbar, 33 times Alhamdulillah, 33 times Subhanallah. We don't curse. We praise Allah. We sanctify Allah. الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ ذِكْرًا كَثِيرًا وَسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا This is what we do. And then it says, second, the Shia, they distorted the Qur'an. حَرَّفُوا القرآن. Well, this Qur'an that I have here, it says, تَشَرَّفَ بِالْأَمْرِ بِطِبَاعَةِ هَذَا الْمُصْحَفِ الشَّرِيفِ خَادِمُ الْحَرَمِينِ الشَّرِيفَيْنِ الْمَلِكِ فَهَدِ بِنْ عَبْدِ الْعَزِيزِ آلِ سْعُودِ The Qur'an that I have here on my desk, I use it here. My personal Qur'an is printed in Saudi Arabia. We have different Qur'an. Why should I, if, if we have different Qur'an, why should I bring this Qur'an? Why shouldn't I bring my own copy? These are the Qur'ans. You go and check on them and see. We have different Qur'ans. For 1400 years, they are accusing the Shia of hiding their Qur'an. They have their own Qur'an. They don't believe in this book. They have their own book. Where is it? Show me a copy of that book. Show me. Show me one page of that book. And then the third thing it says, the Shia, they don't pray. They don't pray. This is how they distort the truth. And you know, many people, they are uneducated. They don't research. Is the one who trades his akhirah, his akhirah, not for his own dunya, for the dunya of someone else, for the dunya of the Sultan. And this is what we see today. There are some ulama, great scholars. They graduated from Al-Azhar, from Muhammad ibn Saud in Medina, from this university, that university. But for the sake of the Sultan, he stands on Khutbat al-Jumu'ah, the holiest time, the holiest place in the mosque, live on TV. And then he accuses the Shia of being non-Muslims and heretics. And then he incites hatred, hatred between the hearts of the mu'mineen and the believers. And when the son of Amir of Qatar became Amir yesterday, two days ago. This, the same Sheikh, the sh same Sheikh, he went, he was the first one who went to him and he said, Congratulations to him. إذا رأيتم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يقول إذا رأيتم العلماء على أبواب الصلاطين فقولوا بئس العلماء وبئس الصلاطين. If you see the alim, the scholar goes to the Sultan to kiss him. He goes to the Sultan to support him and endorse him and say, Ahsant, you are wonderful. Ahsant, of course this has happened. 
When a person rejects Wilayat Amir al Mu'mineen, alayhi salatu wa salam, he should endorse Wilayat Hamad ibn Fulan. Amir Fulan ibn Fulan. He's not worth it. That man is not worth it to accept Wilayat Amir al Mu'mineen. It's either this or that. Either you say, My Mawla and my leader is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. إنما وليكم الله ورسوله والذين آمنوا الذين يقيمون الصلاة ويؤتون الزكاة وهم راكعون. My Mawla is Allah and Prophet Muhammad and Amir al-Mu'mineen. If you choose to reject this, then you have to stand in front of another jerk called Amir and you shake hand with him and you endorse him and you tell him you are my leader. You are the legitimate leader. Of course. It cannot be both this or that. And this is what is happening today. The misery of the Muslim Ummah is a result of the deviation of their ulama. إِذَا فَسَدَ الْعَالِمُ فَسَدَ الْعَالَمُ إِذَا فَسَدَ الْعَالِمُ When the scholar becomes corrupt, the whole world becomes, becomes corrupt. إثنان صنفان من أمتي إذا صلحا صلح الناس وإذا فسد فسد الناس العلماء والأمراء العلماء والأمراء As a result of this hate speech they attack the house this sheikh the mu'min sheikh this sheikh who was part of the government before the government of Egypt but when he found the truth the path of Ahl al-Bayt he deserted everything and he embraced the path of Ahl al-Bayt. The house was attacked and the Sheikh was killed inside his house with two of his brothers and another eight. And then their bodies were dragged in the streets. The Prophet says, Iyakum wal muthlah walaw bil kalb al aqur. Even if a dog, a sick dog, Contagious dog dies, bury him. Do not torture him. Do not dismember him. They came and they dragged the bodies of those four shuhada in the streets. Allahu Akbar. It reminds me of what happened to Muslim Ibn Aqil and Hani Ibn Urwa. Two loyal followers of Imam Hussein السلام, in Kufa. When they were beheaded and killed, they started dragging them in the marketplace, Allahu Akbar. Ma ashbah al bil barih. History is repeating itself, and this is exactly the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Latattabi'unna sunana man kana qablakum. You're going to do exactly what others did before you. وَمَا نَقَمُوا مِنْهُمْ إِلَّا أَنْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَمِيدِ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ بِغَيْرِ حَقٍ إِلَّا أَنْ يَقُولُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهِ It's hard for me to believe that in the land of Egypt, the land which is full of love for Ahl al-Bayt, you should go there to see how people revere and respect and adore Imam Hussein alayhi salam. You should go and visit the shrine of Imam Hussein in Egypt, Masjid al Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, to see for yourself how much this man, Imam Hussein, is loved by the people of Egypt. It's hard for me to see a group in that land, they reject the truth, they reject Ahl al Bayt, and they are rejecting salvation. And they say to the president a week ago, to the Egyptian president, they say to him right in front of him, there was a conference, there was a convention, and the president, President Muhammad Morsi was sitting there. A Salafi sheikh, he comes and he says, oh, oh, our president, please don't open our land, the land of Egypt, to those anjas, the rawafid, the Shia, those who are najis, those who are impure. And the president gives a speech yesterday, live on television. 
And he never mentions anything about this disaster that took place. About four of his citizens. Imagine if four Americans get killed anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world. And President Obama comes to the podium. Would he mention them or not? He would neglect them. Would he say something about them? This is the president of the biggest Islamic country, Egypt. This is a president that belongs to a, a Muslim party, Muslim Brotherhood. He's a Muslim. He advocates Islam. He advocates Quran. He advocates the akhlaq of the Prophet. Yet, when it comes to him, say something to, con to condemn this barbaric act about four citizens of his own country taking a place on the land of Egypt, the soil of Egypt, he chose to be silent. He does not address this. Allahu Akbar. Allahumma inna nashku ilayka faqda nabiyyina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa فقد نبينا وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتكاثر الزمان علينا. شيخ حسن شحادة، I have no doubt that now he's with the companions of Imam Hussein عليه السلام. شهادة مارتدم is كرامة، a gift from Allah. Don't we read in دعاء الافتتاح during the month of Ramadan؟ وَقَتْلًا فِي سَبِيلِكَ فَوَفِّقْ لَنَا Every single night we read this dua. Oh Allah, don't let me die natural death. I want to die for your sake, on your path, as a martyr, as a shaheed. I want to be murdered as the anbiya, as the imams. مَا مِنَّا إِلَّا مَقْتُولٌ أَوْ مَسْمُومٌ وَقَتْلًا فِي سَبِيلِكَ فَوَفِّقْ لَنَا This is the wish of every noble believer, of every wali of awliyaullah, is to receive the shahada. And I conclude with the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم لَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَن تُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى تَحَابُوا تَحَابُوا mutual both sides. We start loving each other. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his forgiveness first on us and on the soul of those shaheeds, the martyrs of Egypt, the martyrs of the truth, the martyrs of the path of Ahlul Bayt, the path of Hidayah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them, to embrace them, with his mercy, with his compassion, to bestow patience on their families, on their children. They gave their life, ultimately. That is the ultimate sacrifice. Some people gave money, some people gave time, some people gave their knowledge, their guidance, but those people chose to give their lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we get this tawfiq and this honor, I don't know whether Allah will accept me, I don't know, to also grant me the shahada. وَقَتْلًا فِي سَبِيلِكَ فَوَفَّقْ لَنَا In his path, shahada, for him, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَا اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات إنك على كل شيء قدير اللهم وحد قلوب المسلمين على الخير والصلاح والبر والتقوى يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أهلك أعداء المسلمين اللهم من أرى أراد بنا وبالإسلام وبالقرآن وبرسولك وأهل بيته سوءا فأرده ومن كادنا فكده 
اللهم أرنا الحق حقا فنتبع والباطل باطلا فنجتنب اللهم ثبتنا على الإيمان على رسالة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى ولاية سيدنا ومولانا أمير المؤمنين ولأئمة الطاهرين اللهم عجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا وتجعلنا اللهم من أنصاره وأعوانه والمستشهدين بين يديه And I invite you to recite سورة الفاتحة إلى أرواح الشهداء إلى أرواح شهداء مصر شيعة أهل البيت وشيعة أمير المؤمنين في مصر الحبيبة إلى روح العلامة المرحوم المخفور له بإذن الله تعالى الشيخ حسن شحاتة وإخوانه المؤمنين الصابرين الشهداء إلى أرواحهم نهدي ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد